the only thing I would stress is that nonviolent movements are inherently bottom up. They, they, they can't be driven from the top because the power from them comes from ordinary people. No grassroots movement is powerful because it has a few, you know, a few famous leaders or a few wealthy leaders. The power from a movement comes from thousands or millions of people shifting their behavior and obedience patterns. And as they shift their behavior and obedience patterns, they shift the balance of power in society. I wouldn't say trigger or, or prompt because, to me, that the sense is then then someone outside is trying to catalyze that process from happening. I would say movements emerge, and from where they emerge, you know, traditional thinking is that there are a certain set of ideal conditions that lead to movement emergence. Sort of a different set, which are things that people can do within their societies to try to create it. And I think one is educate people about nonviolent action, how it works. Um, a lot of times people may be outraged, but they're not going to do something unless they feel like they have something constructive to do. So that's why education about nonviolent action is really critical. People need to get beyond seeing, thinking, oh, we just need to protest to really understanding there's a whole methodology of how you go about movement building and wielding power nonviolently. Um, <clears throat> You know, sometimes trigger events, something really outrageous happening, can help with that process. But I think the pre-existing knowledge among a population is critical, which is why education is critical. One other point is that I think networks of people are really critical. If there are networks of people and trust on the ground at the grassroots level, people are much more likely to be able to coordinate quickly. And this, of course, is why oppressed people are constantly... You know, those who oppress them constantly try to divide them and rule them because they don't want human capital. They don't want social capital built on the ground. You're not, it's very difficult to establish a movement if you have to establish trust networks at the, in the opening stages. But if the trust networks have already been established, it's, it, then that's a whole amount of energy and resources that the movement doesn't need to think about at the outset, and it can just grow from that basis. So there's two ways we can think about the field of, of nonviolent action or civil resistance. One is as a, as a vertical discipline unto itself, a field, you know, distinct from other fields. Um, and then the other is as a horizontal discipline that is cross-cutting and intersects with, you know, that's highly interdisciplinary. And I don't see it as either or, I see it as both and. I, I'm a person who has studied uh, nonviolent movements as a, as a discipline unto itself. But the best insights we get frequently are interdisciplinary ones.